Right, I'm just interviewing one of my friends who loves watching uh, football in Nepal. How are you, mate? <laughs> yeah. Imagine living and playing football in Nepal, playing at one of the highest altitudes in the world. Recently, I spent one week in the capital of Kathmandu. It was a feast for the senses. What would it be like to live there? What would you eat? How is the league run? Stick around and find out. I also watched the national team train and interviewed its star player Rohit Chan, who at 13 years old travelled 600 kilometres from his town to live at the Nepalese Football Academy, where he mastered his trade. Let's go. When I arrived, I wanted to explore the city, so I went walk about. I've been walking in the hot sun, but it's nice to look around the neighborhood and see what's around. Really beautiful country. This is cool. This is like their driving school. And this is like one of their futsal courts. You know, sometimes I complain about how bad some football pitches are, maybe it's too hard, maybe it's too soft, but look at this. I also wandered over to a Hindu temple where they cremate many bodies each day. The ashes go into the river and it was a sobering experience of the realities of life. We came from the earth and one day we will also go back. Alright, we're on the way to the National Stadium. It got affected by the earthquake, so a lot of it was damaged and it needs to be repaired. So just at the National Stadium, as you can see, it's under construction. It's uh, under construction at the moment, but I can just imagine when it's full, when everything's good, again, it would be a sick atmosphere. Right, so we're in a little back alley, it's on like the second or third floor. We have to go down like one little street and we're trying this dessert. It's called Juju Dao. Juju Dao. Buffalo milk and then they heat it up and then put a bit of sugar in it and then put also um, some culture. And this is what it is. Looks good. Let's give it a try. Good. Alright, just finished it. Nice and sweet. Yeah, delicious. They call it, I think, the king of yogurt. Quite nice. I don't know how I found this place, but it's very local and I love, love eating these at these sort of places. Can't go wrong. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, welcome back. Today I've got a special guest. Um, this is Nabin. I met him eight, eight years ago, right? 2011, I think. In Singapore at a friendly match, and now I'm in Kathmandu. He's part of the uh, Nepal Football Association. I'm just going to ask him a few questions about Nepal and the football and how it is there. So, Nabin, yeah. what is the football like in Nepal? The, the fans are amazing, and the footballers are also very skillful. Okay. And they are small but very tough. Yep. Uh, if they get opportunity, they will be really good uh, in South Asia. Smash that like button if you're enjoying this episode. How about the league? Because it was uh, four years or something it wasn't on? Yeah. Well, uh, we had some uh, issues in FA, so they couldn't conduct a league for uh, four years. And then our real calendar will start from next year, 2019, yep. January. Okay, so it's a lot more structured now. Exactly. And we have a good governance now. Uh, the ENFA is focusing on um, infrastructure, training, competition, and okay. capacity building. So this is going to be a very professional uh, starting for us. Oh, fantastic. That's good. In terms of the players, do many of the players just come from Kathmandu or how do you source players for each team? Well, uh, in the uh, in like a decade ago, okay. was, uh, the football players were from Kathmandu because okay. you know it's also football used to be a luxury uh, sport. Oh really? Those okay. days, yeah. 
Uh, but now uh, we have really like good players. They are from outside of Valley. Okay. So most of the players they come from the uh, from the uh, remote area. And they're just self-taught. So exactly. Just yeah. Play yeah. Most of them are self-taught. And that's sometimes the best way to develop as well. That's all we wanted to know. So thanks thank for you. sharing thank you. your thank thoughts you, on uh, nice. Nepal. Yeah, and nice to see you in Nepal. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so we're on a hike today. We're going to Chisipani. Four hour hike, nature. Here's some weed. Here's some weed. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> weed. So behind me here is marijuana plants. Look how big they are. Fresh air, that's why they grow so big. All right, we're just at a local place and they're making beer, local beer. They heat it up. Look at that. The herder. <laughs> Just behind me is the old place where we should have been staying, but the earthquake hit and now it's tilted. That's just not my camera holding. And now this is the place where we stayed. Very misty. Alright, we're just in the shed at the moment, it's raining heavily and I want to sing a song to you guys. Have you ever seen the rain? My YouTube has taken a low point. So it's still very foggy, this is where we're stopping at lunch. Okay, this is a very traditional Nepalese meal. Tell, tell me about this food. It's like, it's, it's basically uh, lentils, lentils, yeah. rice and vegetables and uh, we eat it twice a day. Twice a day? Twice a day, yeah. This is how David chews the gum. Alright, well, just stay to the left hand side please. Oh, you don't even want me in the fucking video! <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be in the video. So, Fee has just told us that it's 17 kilometers that we've walked so far. Today, it's clearing up now. You've got a beautiful look over the valley, and there's flags hanging up. And my mate here just told me this is for peace, or yeah. what is it? It's um, uh, this uh, flags represent holy place. So my man over here was just admiring my calves. He said I have big calves. And I said thank you for the compliment. Yeah, he does. Actually, the chicken's carved out. So I've been eating a lot of different food on this trip and people ask me, have I got an iron stomach? The answer to that is no. I've been sick in the past many times and I think I've built up my stomach. One of the most important things with food when you're overseas in a place that is developing, you should go to the places that are busy there's a high turnover food then the food's going to probably be fresh if the food is also spicy it helps the bacteria can't grow one of the best things about playing football in Asia is that you can travel to other countries nearby it's really cheap and because the countries are developing all the prices are low for most of the places and it's fantastic to explore wait just check out these guys they're like 12, year, 12 years old and they're on the back of some motorbikes. Alright, so we're on the side of the mountain and we came across this. It's a flat pitch full of mud and these young boys are playing on there. Incredible. Oof. These are the local fans. The ball has just gone over the mountain. All right, they got another ball. Look at that. Oh, mate. Ooh. All right, so supporters are up there on the cliff, cheering it on. This is such a cool pitch. Oh. Okay, we finished our, whoa, finished our trek. <laughs> Very bumpy to get down the hill. We're on the way back to Kathmandu. It takes one and a half hours. I'm outside New Everest Momo and getting some momos for lunch. These momos are made 
with uh, buffalo, buffalo's inside, and they taste fantastic. And normally they come with a sauce. This is how David chews the gum. So I'm in the middle of the market. Just bought myself a stool. Very busy around here. At 2 p.m. heading to the Football Association of Nepal to watch the uh, Nepal team train and check it all out. So see you then.